Hello folks. So here is everything set up with my new autofocuser. Uh, let's see, got the autofocuser right there, the camera, the filter wheel. And I actually got a, a chance to test this last night, but the, the clouds moved in, so I didn't actually take any images, but the autofocuser did work. Uh, balancing my mount with all this weight on the back end wasn't that much of a problem. I just scooted my guide scope up as far as it would go, and that seemed to counter it nicely. So, and one thing I did learn is that the, uh, the draw tube is a little less than an inch long, so you don't need a lot. You don't need to go far out a lot. In fact, Ron from, from Moonlight Focuser told me I only really want to be out with the draw tube somewhere around a quarter inch. That's all you really need. So get around there about a quarter inch, do the your final focus with the, the focus knob here, and then let the autofocuser take over. And I did try out the autofocuser last night before the clouds moved in and everything worked. So hopefully today I can get some images off. The only problem is the winds right now are about 14 miles an hour. And if those don't go down, it's not going to work so well. My guiding is going to be terrible, even with my CGX mount. In fact, I wish I was doing my small scope today. It would probably held up better. But one tip against high winds, if you have a scope like this, uh, take off your dew shield. Uh, this acts as like a, a sail on a sailboat. It makes the wind that much worse. And you'll find your guiding will improve on windy days if you take that dew shield off. You may have dew issues later in the night, but it'll help in the short term. Okay, that's all I got to share. See you later. Hey, it is 2.30 a.m. and I've captured... Quite a few images of HA on the Bubble Nebula. I'm going to see if I can do the Hubble palette on the Bubble. The Hubble on the Bubble. Or maybe I'll just stick with HA if I like the way it's looking. But I'm using the autofocus. And the graph for the autofocus is looking kind of funny, but it still appears to be working. Um, I, I hope I didn't break my autofocus or I tighten some screws up uh, trying to uh, adjust uh, the tension and I, I heard a pop. That's not good when you hear a pop. And I, I sent a message to Ron at Moonlight and he said uh, just take a look at the draw tube up and down. If anything's cracked, um, I can send it back and he'll fix it for me. I mean really nice people over there at Moonlight. I, I hope I didn't break anything, but it appears to be working right now for me. It's still working, so I don't know if I want to send anything back, as long as it keeps going. Uh, and, and this is what a single raw image looks like for three minutes, and I think I made a mistake with my three-minute exposures, because look at my mean readout. Only 465. That is really low. I may be underexposed, and... When it's that low, um, you run the risk of just not picking up enough signal. Uh, some pixels may not be turning on. So uh, this, I don't really want to just stop and start over. I'm just going to see how it looks. And um, I'll be back. So this is how my guiding is looking right now, which is kind of a surprise because I checked my weather app, but it still says the winds right now are about 10 miles per hour. So... That's hard to believe when I'm getting this kind of uh, guiding, 0.52. Maybe it's settled down a lot more out there. But uh, uh, I'll take that. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, it's the next morning, and I captured 89 images last night. And I told Deep Sky Stacker to keep 100% of the images. Even though a few of them did have airplanes, Deep Sky Stacker, like I mentioned before, pretty good at keeping all your images and averaging out those airplanes. And uh, I, I've just noticed in the past, Pixel site tends to leave them in. Maybe it's just because of the, some of the settings I chose, I'm not sure, but I still prefer Deep Sky or Pixel site when I'm doing multiple filters. I stack them all at once, star align all at once. It's a lot easier. And I think they work in calibration frames better. But for now, uh, Deep Sky Stacker is doing the trick. I wanted to show you this comparison the one on the left is 89 images plus 50 flats. 
The one on the right is 89 images plus 50 flats, 50 bias, and 50 darts. And I was just curious, do, uh, do bias and darts still make a difference, even with today's newer cameras? And apparently, in, in my case, they still help out a lot. I mean, look at all the brightness around the edges that isn't really here on the right because I incorporated bias and darks and it, the nebula looks more contrasty. So just to keep that in mind, uh, all calibration frames help out. I'm not sure if I left out darks, if that would make a difference or not. I'm not sure, but I'm going to keep doing 50, 50, and 50 for flats, bias, and darks. And if you look at the stars, it's really easy to tell if you're out of focus with an SET because it's got that big obstruction in the center. And really quick, you, you can tell if there's a hole in your stars, you know you're out of focus. And I don't see anything like that. I think the stars look pretty good after this autofocuser. Uh, it was running all night, every 45 minutes. The only thing I don't like is, I don't think it has to do with the autofocuser, but uh, the stars still seem elongated. I mean, they, they're, they're flat. I don't know if you can tell right there. They're almost going off, and, and those don't look too bad, actually. Maybe I'm being a little too critical of my own SET. Yeah, that's not that bad. Uh, uh, it's a little flat, but I think I still have flexure issues going on somewhere with that, that ADSC. I know it has a, a floating mirror, not like the, the edge telescopes where you can lock the mirror in place. And I don't think that helps. So there's probably some flexure going on. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to do a color image of this one. I really like um, HA on some targets. And I'm going to probably crop because I want to get really close in on that bubble. I think it looks cool. So I'm going to work on this image and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Thanks for watching.